Hi guys, great you made it back. I'm back in the workshop. Um, we're continuing today with the shelves that I'm building for my daughter's room. Uh, in the last episode, I jointed and planed the wood for the shelves. And the previous episode, we glued up these old boards. Now, I really like the way they look, but they didn't come out so flat. So I've decided I'm going to join them and plane them as well because the shelves came out looking really nice. So I think to take off a, a little bit of this uh, roughness, but still to be left with its old attitude or something, that's what I'm aiming for. So uh, now I have to go back to the jointer. And of course the jointer planer combination machine of mine is in the planing, thickness planing situation at the moment. So I'm going to turn it back into a jointer, I'm going to joint them, and then I'm going to turn it back into a planer, I'm going to plane them, and uh, that's what we're going to do now. So uh, let's get into it. Disconnect the dust extractor. Well, I hope you're all well. I'm enjoying making these videos and reading all your comments. I hope you're all enjoying it as well. And uh, yeah, strange days indeed, but I'm sure we're all gonna get through it. And uh, hopefully we'll be a better bunch of human beings for it at the end. So anyway, let's carry on with some carpentry. Okay, well, you might be wondering, where is the footage of me jointing and planing? Uh, I made a mess of it, guys. I'm sorry, I turned it off instead of on. So we don't have any footage of me jointing and planing, but here's the finished product. And I think it looks very nice. It's much closer looking now to the boards for the shelves. I like this look. And, uh, and it's a bit cleaner and more aesthetic as well. Um, sometimes I really go for that really rough look, but I think in my daughter's bedroom, it was a bit too much. And this is a bit more manageable and easy to clean and aesthetic. So. We're going to stick with this look. So what are we going to do now? Um, we're going to cut them to length, which is what I was talking about in a previous video. We didn't do it because now we're playing them. So now we're going to cut them to length and mark out the shape. So it will be slightly wider down here. And then the shelves will be sitting like this. And we have to make a groove for the back as well. So I think, first of all, I should make the groove for the back and then I'll cut it to length and then I'll cut out the shape. Um, we didn't talk about joinery yet. I, I didn't talk about it because I really didn't decide what I'm going to do to be honest with you. We have all sorts of options. We could make a groove here, a rebate or a rabbit, um, that this shelf fits into the groove. Um, we could use biscuits we could use screws, we could use nails. Um, if we didn't want to see nails or screws from the other side, we could put a small, uh, a small piece of wood, a, a batten. Um, I think that's the word in English. Something that's like, um, something like this, that the shelf would sit on, it would be screwed to the side of the cabinet. The shelf would sit on it and you could put a, shell, a screw through the shelf or a screw from here into the shelf. This is an option. So I didn't really decide yet. I'll have to give that a little bit of thought. Um, but now I think I should go and look for the material for the back. And then once I've got the material for the back, I know how big to make that groove. So I'm gonna go and start having a look for some material. It's dark outside. I got here very late this evening. So I'm going to put some lighting out there and see what I can find. As far as I remember, in this pile of wood here, behind these big pieces of bamboo, there's some tongue and groove that I spoke about. So I'm going to have a little dig and see what I can find back there. Yeah. And yes, indeed, here's some tongue and groove. Now these bits are all a bit short, let's see what else we've got, if there's anything a bit longer.
Oh, nice. Well, this is a bit better. them up maybe. Mm. That looks couple of old ones. A couple of dark ones. A couple of old ones. Maybe. You know what? I'm gonna try also just to put one of these painted ones through the planer. Just take off a thin skim of paint and see how it looks underneath. Do you want to come with me to the planer? Let's do it. Okay, so it's come out of the planer. Um, this side, I can see there's several layers of paint. There's blue, white, and brown. Um, planing, it doesn't do it any favors whatsoever, but maybe with sanding with some rough paper and eating a little bit of blue, a bit of white, you know, and seeing various colors could be nice the back of it i also planed and the back of it has come out with a really nice old piney color the same as the rest of the pieces so this is also nice and warm i quite like it um, and it all just makes everything look the same but then again why does everything have to look the same maybe a contrast is nice well you tell me what you think i'm going to go ahead because I'm, 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 I'm in the process at the moment. But uh, down in the comments below, tell me what you thought. If it looks nicer, the blue, or the, the nice old pine color. I'm not gonna give it a sanding as well and tell me what you think about that. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, um, when I sand, I like to sand on a piece of carpet. Just a regular bit of old carpet like this. And this helps to stop the work sliding around. There's less vibration, less noise. Um, and also, if you've sanded one side of the work and you flip it over, it protects it from getting scratched by the work surface. There's old glue or something like on my work table. Uh, so that's why I use a piece of carpet. And now I'm just going to get some rough. I like, I like the way it's looking, but um, yeah, well, I've still got time to think about that. I'm going to choose the pieces, cut them uh, lengthways, take off this broken groove and broken tongue, uh, cut them roughly to length, and then I'll decide what to do about the, the finish at the end. But once I've done all that, I know what thickness also to make the groove for the back in the sides of the cabinet. Okay, so um, I'm going to take them to the table saw and rip them up. So now the material's been cut to rough length, I'm going to start to rip off the edge.
Okay, so now I've got all this stuff ripped up. There's a few boards a bit narrower than others, but that really doesn't matter. Um, still didn't decide how to finish them. I'll keep thinking about that. But now I know what thickness it is, more or less, if I plane a bit off so the groove will be too deep, that's not a problem. Uh, so now I can cut the groove in the back. I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, so now I've just decided which side I'm going to have inside and which side's going to be outside. Now, with these particular shelves, if you remember, I showed you a, a little bit of footage of where it's going to go in the house, and it's, it's in a niche. So nobody really sees the outside of it, they see more of the inside of it. So I chose these sides, I think this side is more beautiful and rustic for the inside. Um, this has got a little broken bit here, so I'm going to make that the back. And this has a broken eye here as well, so I'm going to make that the back. So I'm going to label back, back, like this. Now, how thick is the back? I guess it's like 12 mil, half an inch. <laughs> that was a bonus for you each, guys. I'm really sorry, I don't know inches. So yeah, half an inch. 12 mil. So if this is the back of the cupboard, let's say, let's say it's standing on its back, like this, and the, the back is gonna go in there. So I'm gonna leave a big step so I can put nails in, and 12 mil deep, and the same here. 12 mil deep, and a big step where I can put the nails in. So it's gonna be, that's gonna go, and under there, that's gonna go. And the same with this one. This is gonna go, and this is gonna go, so. The grooves cut out, they're looking very nice. Hope you can, can see them nicely. So now, finally, we're going to cut them to length. But of course, we need to change the saw.
now it's time to decide what's up, what's down. We know what's the front already, we know what's the back. So now I've got to choose all this is the bottom, or this is the bottom. Um, I had a look at them already, to be honest, and I kind of like this area to be down at the bottom. When you're sitting, like, looking at these shelves, so this area will be at the bottom, and this area will be at the top. So the first shelf from the bottom, it's about 50 centimeters up. So I'm just going to mark out some light pencil lines, um, just to help me to make some kind of shape here. I'm going to mark the width of the shelves and stuff and uh, put in a few lines. A bit of old dry silicone out of a silicone tube. The 
does a good job extending the life of your belts and all sorts of other sandpapers, discs, whatever. So that's it for this episode. Um, the sides are coming along nicely, they've got a groove, they've got a nice shape, the back's prepared, well, partly prepared, the shelves are partly prepared. So um, in the next video we're going to be connecting things together, maybe doing something with the back, sanding it, I don't know still, um, and cutting the shelves to length and assembling the, the whole unit. So hopefully that's what we'll get up to in the next uh, episode. Hope to see you there. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Take care, be well, and uh, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.